You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Secrets of Life with Dr. Don Fouts. Dr. Don will offer challenging and thought-provoking discussion about the many ways you can use to discover more about yourself and others. You'll learn how to change unwanted behaviors so that you can move forward in life more self-aware and free. And now, here's the host of The Secrets of Life, Dr. Don Fouts. Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts, along with Vincent Labadula, and you are listening to The Secrets of Life. And we're being brought to you by the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Now, I'm Don Fouts, and I have a uh, practice, and it's Donald Fouts & Associates, in my private practices in Bel Air, Maryland, where I provide life coaching, counseling, speaking, and mediation services. And first of all, I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. We're delighted to have you with us. And since this is a live show, if you would like to comment on a topic or ask a question, you're welcome to call in during our time together and particularly during our time with our guests. Our toll-free number is 866-451-1451. Again, it's 866-451-1451. Or you could send me an email at don at drdon.me. Or you can look at it as Don at drdon.me. And it will, I'll get back to you as soon as possible with that. Uh, also, please be aware that you can listen to any of our previously recorded shows by going to boldbravemedia.com. Uh, click on Shows and then Self-Help Shows, where you'll be able to find the pre-recorded versions. Or you may go to my webpage, which is donaldfouts.com. That's donaldpfouts.com. And click on Media Posts. Now, in today's, today's show, we are focusing on re-entrance. Now, the term re-entrance simply means a person or thing that re-enters or returns to something. But in this case, we're talking about people who are being released from incarceration and returning back into society. Now, this is an area of great importance for correctional facilities all over our country because they are very much wanting re-entrance, those being released from their facility, to be productive and successful in life. They also hope to reduce recidivism rate by not having them return to prison once again. But often, the odds are kind of stacked against them because some of the issues they typically faced is having no place to go, no job, minimum specialized training, and minimal specialized education. education. To complete matters even more, is that many will return to their communities being homeless, and they often return to the same environment where they were got in trouble in the first place. Now, on today's show, we have someone special with us who I count as a very dear friend of mine. His name is Chester France, and we are so pleased to have you with us here today, Chester. Uh, Chester is closely involved with reentrance and offering solutions that will help. And, well, I'll let him tell his story. So, Chester, let me start by asking you to introduce yourself and uh, give us some background information about who you are and some of your experiences. Well, thank you, Don and Vincent, for having me to chat with you about this very important uh, topic and discussion. Uh, I grew up in uh, West Baltimore, a community uh, called Sandtown. Sandtown. Uh, I'm a graduate of, of Douglas High School, mm -hmm. uh, graduate of Morgan State University, BS in business and marketing, graduate of Howard University School of Divinity uh, in uh, Washington, D.C., 
also a graduate of University of Maryland School of Social Work with a master's in management and community uh, organization. I also mm-hmm. attended uh, the Summer Leadership Institute for Faith-Based Community and Economic Development, sponsored mm-hmm. by the Harvard University Divinity School. Go on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Center for the Study of Values in Public Life. Take that, Sandtown. How's that? Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's good. <laughs> From going from Sandtown to that's Harvard. Right. Huh? Um, I spent 26 years in corporate America uh, with uh, two major life insurance companies in sales and management, uh, with the Prudential Insurance Company and the New York Life Insurance Company. Mm-hmm. Uh I served as an associate pastor in two churches in Washington, D.C., and as an assistant pastor of a community church in West Baltimore. Uh, Afterwards, I spent 17 years as a Protestant chaplain uh, with the Maryland Department of Public Safety and Correctional Services. Uh I served in three maximum security prisons in Maryland. Right. And it was speaking to a young man in a class I was teaching that told me that he was going to start a sewing business when he got released. Now, there are three sewing plants in the Maryland prison system where inmates make every garment worn by inmates, correctional officers, uniforms, and a lot of other items that they produce as well. But it was while in divinity school and particularly working in the prison system that I really understood my call to ministry. And that is to bring about some social and economic and political change uh, to affirm persons as subjects and not objects Mm -hmm. and to instill pride, hope and love and care and to proclaim in word and deed a faith, that calls for the liberation, the redemption, and renewal of persons who tend to be underserved, underemployed, and without an advocate for help and support. Well, well, that's great because people all need that, mm-hmm. particularly reentrance. And and, and we're we're gonna we're gonna get into it in more detail coming up. But uh, you know, some of the communities in in and around the Baltimore area that we talk about are economically depressed now. And and a lot of the people that are incarcerated, men and women that are incarcerated in the state of Maryland, come from economically de- depressed areas and re-enter into economically depressed areas. Mm-hmm. And, and and so they're coming in not only not only in a in a bad economic area, but they're also lacking in a lot of life skills. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and, and so you're working toward changing that you're working toward changing that in a lot of different ways. But, um, I, I still, I, I'm still amazed that when you, when you talk about the, the role that you had within the prison, within the prison system mm-hmm. you know, as a chaplain, that, you know, that, that had to be unbelievably encompassing for your, uh, uh, for your time and, you know. Three energies. Well, it, it was, but however, you know, I I, I recognize my call to ministry, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and that was, and it helped me to be in the prison system to really recognize that that my call was not in pulpit ministry, uh-huh. but in a ministry to serve folks who tend to be underserved, right. and it was there that I really got clear what God's purpose was sure. for me. In my ministry. You got a chance to fill their bellies and their souls at the same exactly. time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like well, that. I, I'm always, I'm just impressed by the vision that you've had to do this and uh, and where it's going to go, the potential where it can go. And uh, I think it's just a, a fabulous thing to be able to do. So uh, you and Don have known each other a while. I just had the opportunity to meet you today. And so uh, we're going to we're gonna jump to a break here pretty quick. But when we come back, I want to talk a lot about the chill station. We're going to just chill out, I would imagine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, when we come back, we will hear from Chester and talking about the chill station. And, uh, and that's when we come right back very shortly. I'm your host, Dr. Don, and you're listening to The Secrets of Life, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. So don't go away. We'll be right back and explain it all. Sensitive, beautiful, 
feminine, and devotional. These are just some of the words to describe the art of male feminist artist Kimberly Berg. Creator of the website IsisRising.net, Mr. Berg's paintings are designed to inspire and awaken the ancient goddess within. He feels that artists have an important role to play in changing the patriarchal world we live in with a unique ability to create a visual image that can inspire viewers to reinvent themselves. These feminine images create a visual connection to a woman's primal roots, her relationship to nature, and her goddess-based spirituality. Both men and women can benefit from a deeper respect and understanding of what it means to be a woman in attunement to her inner being. Go to IsisRising.net to view the works of male feminist artist Kimberly Berg and be inspired. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Well, welcome back. I am Dr. Don Fouts, and I'd like to remind you again that if you'd like to call in, our toll-free number is 866-451-1451. Also, if you would prefer to contact me directly at Donald Fouts & Associates in Bel Air, Maryland, you may do so on my webpage, donaldfouts.com. That's Donald, P-F-O-U-T-S, dot com. Or you may email me at don at drdon.me. And we are coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we've now been notified that we are also being added to iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes. Well, before the break, we were talking to Chester France, and he was uh, going into getting ready to talk about the chill station. That's right. That's a, we chill out at the chill station? Is that uh... – That's not really <laughs> – I what know that. we're going to do <laughs> is to chill out. What are we going to do? <laughs> well, let me let me give you a little context before okay. I go on to who we are as a chill station. That people will ask me, well, chill station, what? Where did that come from? Mm -hmm. uh, and it was in the Park Heights community in Baltimore, where I was working for a pastor of a church uh, on uh, in Park Heights, and in this building. She wanted to develop this old AT&T telephone company into a church and a community resource center. Right. So we built the upstairs into a church and a daycare center. But in the basement, she wanted to have a place for kids to come after school to be able to get away from the violence. Right. And she had wanted to call it the chill station. And in that chill station, the kids would have a, a library, they have a place where they can eat, they have a TV room, they have a study room. But it was so terrible in the basement with lead and asbestos sure. that really we couldn't do that. The pastor passed away, the church is no longer there. But I love that name, mm -hmm. the Chill Station, mm -hmm. and so I adopted it right. and, <laughs> and it, carried it forward. And I, I like the fact that it, it, it's not—it's not just chilling out, but it's—it is an escape from the violence and the and, and the noise and the and and just the the mechanics that are going on around. And I, and I'm sure that that leads right into where we were talking about with with the reentry programs and. People that are incarcerated, men that are incarcerated in, in Maryland, are not incarcerated where they re-enter. They re-enter where they left. Correct mm -hmm. statement? That's correct. In most in most cases. That's correct. And if they if they left Baltimore with the clothes on their back, they come back to Baltimore with the clothes on their back. That's pretty much, pretty much it. true. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. And so the Chill Station really, we were incorporated in the state of Maryland back in 2012. Uh, we're a community based 501c federally tax exempt mm-hmm. nonprofit organization. And our mission really is to reduce poverty, create sustainable employment and entrepreneurship, improve the quality of life, and foster economic mobility of people who tend to be underserved underemployed, uh, and low-income families. And we are really grounded in the principles of social entrepreneurship, and that is to advance the social mission through entrepreneurial and earned income strategies. Uh Mm -hmm. And so our whole purpose is dedicated to building human capital, and that means merely improving the outcomes of individuals and families, building neighborhood capital, which means improving the physical and economic infrastructure of the neighborhood, and building social capital, which means merely strengthening what is obviously called civic life right. and the social fabric of uh, and sense of community. Uh, and so... Our workforce and uh, training and and development social entrepreneur initiative is going to be located in Baltimore City. Okay. And uh, we're on a mission to design and implement and maintain a multiple or multidimensional approach to creating resourceful environment dedicated to improving the well-being of people by using the worker-owned cooperative business model. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, I know so, you'll have a question right, about there's that. There's a ton of stuff to <laughs> unpack here first. First off, let's go back to earned income as opposed to reliance on social services. And, and everybody needs it. it. Trust me, everyone needs a leg up at times. But this is giving someone – I know – and we've all been to places where we've experienced when somebody opens a paycheck for the first time in a long time. It doesn't matter if it's a convict. It doesn't matter if it's a single mother that's that's just coming back or, or someone someone that opens that up and says, "I earn that. Mm-hmm. I did. I ha- I have a part in that." And I gotta believe that it is it is economically more advantageous to have. People that have paid their debt to society on the streets, paying their bills and building the economy of uh, of a neighborhood as opposed to going back to prison. You're exactly right. Okay. I mean, you know, people who are previously incarcerated tend to come home maybe if they had a job while incarcerated. And everybody doesn't have a job while incarcerated. Mm-hmm. But if they had a job in co- while incarcerated, they may earn Anywhere from maybe a dollar eighty cent to three dollars a day. Wow. Okay. And so when they get a check, not only do they say, I earned this, they can say with us, they have made a difference in somebody's life, in my life, because I've produced something that was a social benefit. So what you're saying is whole this whole initiative is really to reinvest in people and reinvest in the community as well. Exactly. And just build one right after the other. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned that the uh, jobs, um, uh, most uh, most of the uh, un- people that are incarcerated will have a job, whether it's, as you mentioned before, the uh, the, the sewing, the making of the uniforms and the uh, the flags uh, and other things like that. But there's also furniture, there's agriculture, there's it's it's a complete ecosystem in the Maryland prison system. Uh, there's a prison that does all of the design, graphics, and printing of all of the lottery material. Okay. Wow. All right. Every piece of lottery material is designed, produced by people who are incarcerated. In Maryland. When we come back, we're going to, uh, I know we just started touching on the, on the chill, uh, chill station, but, you know, we want to take probably a look at, at your first and focused initiative, and that's in lifting labels. Mm-hmm. So let's okay. talk about lifting labels. Yeah, and when we come back, we'll talk about that with uh, Chester, and uh, this is The Secrets of Life. I am your host, Dr. Don Fouts. 
And we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network. We'll be right back after these messages. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together, we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline, and she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes, and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. All right. We're glad to be back with you. You're listening to The Secrets of Life, live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Don. And we were talking to Chester France, and right before the break, we were uh, getting some information on the chill station. And uh, this just sounds so great, uh, Chester, to uh, what's going on here. Uh, let me ask the question about um, why is there such a need and why is reentry initiative so important and critical? I mean, it's something that we really can identify, but there's uh, probably some underlying issues as well. Well, let me just quickly give you a, a few statistics. Um, Baltimore incarcerated population has been researched to death. Mm -hmm. I, I will <laughs> tell you that. A lot of folks have written research papers about folks incarcerated. Um, so there was a, a, a research done uh, in Baltimore some time ago in Baltimore City upon release. They, they, they talked to 324 releasees, almost 89 percent returned to Baltimore City. Another 10 percent returned to Maryland counties and 1 percent returned to other states. Um, but this is interesting. In the sample, returning prisoners were concentrated in a few communities in Baltimore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only six out of 55 Baltimore communities accounted for almost 36 percent right. of prisoners returning to the city. And mm -hmm. these communities included Sandtown, Winchester. Mm -hmm. Holland Park, Greenmount East, Southern Park Heights, Allendale, Irvington, South Hilton, Greater Rosemont, and Clifton Bethia. This wow. is where most of the folks concentrated coming back to Baltimore City. So for me, it made sense to have an initiative in Baltimore City yes. where a lot of folks were incarcerated from sure. and coming back to. This is a, a, a great need. And then there is a lot of employers who are really looking for people who tend to be hard to employ. Mm -hmm. And so we're stepping up to the plate to provide employers an opportunity uh, to have these types of employees. But you're not only doing it. You're not just saying, OK, we're going to give people an opportunity because there are a lot of minimum wage, not a lot of, but there are minimum wage jobs that are available for these individuals. But we're talking, and most people don't think of this when you think, talk about people coming out of the uh, prison system, we're talking about skilled laborers. 
Correct. That are ready to re-enter or to enter a job force and have a legitimate job for the first time in their life. This is not this is not someone that's just collecting carts in a grocery store. This is someone that's learned to sew. I mean, a seamstress. Right. There's no learning curve there. They already know what to do. Right. right. Mm-hmm. So this is this is what the uh, how the chill station is going to create jobs, uh, and what the product really is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was talking to a young man while I was teaching a class that told to me, Mr. France, when I go home, I'm gonna start a sewing business. I'm gonna make clothes, wow. and be an entrepreneur. So I said, well, tell me a little bit more about that. How do you think you're going to do that? He said, well, I worked in the sewing plant Mm -hmm. and I know how to sew. I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. Uh, So here we are, clergy in the prison system. And as a chaplain, I managed, I can't tell you how many volunteers church-related volunteers I I managed Mm -hmm. over 17 years. So we have a a really first line of support with churches who have a vision and a mission for re-entry. And then we are connected to churches across the country. And the thing that came to me is, well, we have people who know how to sew. We're clergy and we're buying robes and buying robes from people we have no idea. And the money is not coming back to our communities, not benefiting anybody that we serve why don't we try to make this happen and put these two things together? So I decided, along with the help of God who gave me the vision <laughs> and <laughs> sent me some other folk to help me manifest mm-hmm. the vision, I don't want to leave that out. Right. Um, and so what we're going to do is to create and establish a sewing profit center. We initially want to hire 30 people previously incarcerated to produce the following, church pulpit apparel, clergy Mm -hmm. robes. I I also, from the old school, I think about usher uniforms, but today people, they don't don't do usher uniforms no more. (laughs) You know, they're in suits Mm -hmm. and dresses Mm -hmm. these days. But also choir robes. Sure. Just think about the the number of churches and clergy across Mm -hmm. the country, cross denominations. Mm -hmm. That this is such a huge market. And so we also will produce uh, judiciary robes. We have judges Mm -hmm. that we know personally that says, I don't want to send somebody back for violating their parole, but I have to because they don't have no place to send them to work. Uh And if you can do this, we'll help you and we'll purchase our judiciary robes as well. We're going to do college and university choir and college and university graduation robes and gowns. So this is an opportunity for us to create something. And we're not reinventing the wheel. There is a market. Right. And there's a market. And there's also now a goal to uh, sustainability office uh, for the from the mayor, for Mayor Catherine Pugh, the the sustainability office. This is something made in Baltimore uh, is is an amazing initiative. And so you're not only keeping jobs in the inner city, but you're saving lives. And, you know, it's a really broad statement, but Don, we, we've talked right. about this before. Someone that now has a level of self-worth, you train on this. Maslow's theorem, the bottom layers, what do they need? They need mm-hmm. someplace to live. Mm-hmm. And, and your three Safety questions. Issues, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, uh, and that's mm-hmm. what you're looking to do. And you have a constant pattern, hopefully, of people that are incarcerated for the last time. Uh, by by coming back into into your program through the chill station and one of the first like you said the first project within the chill station would be lifting labels. Yeah, okay. and even what you were saying about the the robes. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of places that use uniforms too, mm-hmm. and they can be done as well. Um, and I guess to say that same thing that these people that are with the jobs making money are going to spend it in Baltimore. Exactly. Yep. And they're going to yeah. spend it in their community, in their community. In their community. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, their, their, their kids, their, uh, their, their families, everyone will, everyone's going to benefit off this. And you're, you're talking about a living wage as well. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We're starting them at least at thirteen fifty an hour and wow. participate in the cost of their health insurance plan Amazing. as well. That's now funny. that's still not, 
a lot of money. That's a lot more than three dollars. Make three dollars a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, wow. let's uh, we'll touch on that just a little bit more when we come back. Um, all right, we're at another time for a break. This quickly. Uh, you've been listening to the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Don. And we'll be coming back right after this break, and we'll continue talking with our guest, Chester France. So I hope you stay with us. We'll be right back. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and you are listening to The Secrets of Life. Now, we are talking to Chester France, and we're going to continue our conversation. And uh, and Chester, let me ask you, I know that uh, one one of the ideas and the initiatives that you have there is to have this program or this initiative uh, to also benefit by having it as a cooperative business model. How do you, can you explain that for us? Yes, sure, certainly. Um, worker-owner cooperative is somewhat of a new business model, mm. uh, particularly in the United States. It's mm-hmm. done well in other countries. There's even a worker-owned cooperative in a prison in the Dominican Republic or one of those Caribbean uh, 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 countries. Okay. Behind the fence, they have established a worker-owned cooperative. Wow. Okay. And it really comes out of another uh, uh, long-term research and pro- uh, program of worker-owned cooperative done in Spain as well. So it's mm-hmm. done in other uh, countries. U.S. is, uh, you know, really looking at it as a different business model. But this is what it really does. It is owned and run by its members, mm-hmm. okay. the employees. And whether the members are the customers, the employees, or residents, they have equal say in what the business does and a share of the profits. Wow. All right? That's the key. That gives a lot of investment. That there. gives oh. you that gives a person ownership mm-hmm. sure. in terms of owning something, taking care of it. And making sure that it works. So it's not really just moved and motivated uh, by profit. Uh, They uh, cooperatives share internationally agree on principles and act together to build a better world through cooperation. Mm -hmm. In Baltimore, there are several small cooperatives already up and running uh, in, in Baltimore City. Many of them are small coffee shops. There are uh, cooperatives of, of uh, house cleaning services uh, by Hispanics and Latinos right. uh, in Baltimore. 
Uh, some of the places that you may go for your coffee, you may not know, is a worker-owned cooperative. Mm. So it's a model that's really emerging uh, in Baltimore. And so the bottom line is that it's created for and by its employees. It has a different uh, purpose. It's a common it's common needs to the members. Uh, they control one member to vote, not one member per share. Um, and there's a different allocation of profits rather than the top heavy down business model that the U.S. is accustomed to. Sure. And it's a, a, again, we talk about the, the reentry in those communities, those five or six communities that in, within Baltimore City. Um, most of the formerly incarcerated people or guys are there for uh, drug related charges. Correct. Okay. Yes. And so, so that could be at the root of, and and so by taking the the individuals that are that have that have established a skill, giving them flesh in the game, making them a part of the community. Now, one one component that people would then say is, it's just now you're giving someone money that didn't have money before. What you, how are they going to manage it? What are they going to What are they going to do with it? Not that this is wealth, but this is a big difference from three dollars a day. Yeah. And the other component to that is that we're not just giving people a job. We want to infuse with them the life skills that they need, life skills and and understanding communication skills, customer service skills, banking uh, relationships, how to manage their money and how to create a banking account. We have partners, their banks in the community that already have these programs up and running. And so we're not trying to do everything. We know that that's not what our mission is. But the important thing is to be able to partner with existing agencies and other nonprofits who are doing different types of work to help make the person a whole person so that they don't have any reason to ever want to go back to prison. Right. And there's every every reason to be successful. And every reason to be successful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and Chester, I'm, I'm curious too. But I'm, I don't think it would be a hard sell, but how do you how do you recruit the people? Well, let me tell you that that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> there are and literally captive audience. But there is a, first of all, there are people already on the street. I mean, I'm, I'm I have a relationship with particularly the Mondamin One Stop Center. Oh yeah. At the Mondamin Mall. And a lot of people are going to remember Mondamin even if they're not from Baltimore when we talk about the the uprising in the in the, uh, exactly. the the challenges the community had a couple of years ago. Right. So. Yeah. So the Mondamin One Stop Center is a place where folks go to get services, learn uh, how to use the computer to look up jobs. They have workshops on all types of topics. And so there is a place right there that people are coming to who need jobs. But also we have relationships with people at the, U at the Maryland Department of Public Safety Correctional Services that will help us to develop a pipeline of folks with some skills in sewing to let us know who they are when they're going to be released, and particularly within 18 months, we'll be able to, you know, tap into that. But I can tell you that once this is announced, people will be lined up at the door oh, yeah. to try to become employed. And the, the, the products and services that you provide are are, are well known. I mean, in the in the community, in the faith faith based community, and when you talk about just the just the pulpit robes, we're talking we're talking pieces of fine art. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you're when you're talking about the recruitment aspect of it, does that uh, open it up to the public? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, we're not trying to turn away anybody. We do know that there's a certain skill sets that a person has we might look for, but it's mm -hmm. not necessary. Right. They don't need a, uh, they don't need a high school diploma. They don't need mm -hmm. a GED. Huh. If they can demonstrate to us that they have a desire yeah. to work and want to really make a difference in their life, we will give them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's really all that they're asking for. It's up to them that we will say the ball is in their court. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Well, um, we will be back again. We're going to take a quick break. And uh, you're listening to The Secrets of Life. This is the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts. We'll be right back after these messages. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various businesses interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Uh, welcome back again. You're listening to The Secrets of Life from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And right before the break, we were looking at the Lifting Labels program, and uh, or the initiative, I should say. And uh, we're talking with Chester France about that. And um, Chester, what, what stages of development are you in right now? Well, we have, to give you an idea, long and short of it, is that we have uh, developed a board of directors. Of course, that's one of the first things you have to do mm-hmm. <laughs> to become a nonprofit organization. Uh, we did that in 2000 uh, uh, and incorporated in Maryland in 2016. We received our federal tax exempt status as a 501c3 in 2014. We're compliant with all the state and of Maryland regulations, mm-hmm. which is key. Yes. Particularly certificate of good standing, sales exemption, tax exemption, uh, personal property returns. We're up to date on all of those. We're registered, which is key to raising funds in the state of Maryland. You must be, as a nonprofit, registered with the Office of Secretary of State mm-hmm. with a certificate under the Charitable Solicitations Act. Uh, and you must be up to date on your federal tax returns. And we've done all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, We have researched the market for church and clergy apparel uh, and feel strongly that we have an opportunity to share, to get a share of that current market. It's a huge market. According to some researchers, there's over 350,000 churches in the United States, different denominations, Mm -hmm. 350,000. That's quite a chunk. We're just trying to get a little piece of that pie. Mm -hmm. A little piece of the piece. That's to right. To make a difference That's it. in somebody's life. And by the way, lifting labels was that trademark was created by a young woman in the master's program at University of Baltimore. And lifting labels and our tagline is changing lives with each stitch. I like that. Wow, I like that. Okay. Yeah. It's registered with the U.S. Office of Patent and Trademark. In Washington, D.C., we have registered that. Uh, and we had a one of the University of Maryland's law centers in College Park to help us with applying and doing the research on that name worldwide. That's, 
That's great. All That's right. Great. So we have students so, doing it. So let's go. Let's go back into our, what's the uh, uh, again. The goal is to is to to help people reenter uh, society, to make communities sustainable, to 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 grow the ball, the made in Baltimore, to change and, and uplift people out of poverty mm-hmm. and to just move society as a whole forward, keep people from going back to prison. Yeah. That's underneath the heading of the chill station, the first project, lifting labels, the sewing project that's moving forward. I'll, I'll bet you got all the funding you need at this point, right? In your pocket. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the I, wish, to- I, wish, I wish that were the case. <laughs> Uh, funding is always a big issue, particularly with startups and right. particularly with a nonprofit organization. Uh, but I think we, you know, we've done all of the things that we need to do to be in compliance to show funders or donors mm-hmm. that we're serious and we are committed uh, to this initiative. I'm a big uh, advocate of individual giving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, grant funding is good. Part of your overall fundraising strategic plan. But most of the money comes from individuals who have a passion for your mission and are willing to participate by sending a donation. So this is how people can support this initiative. Mm -hmm. First, we would love you to serve on our board of directors. If you have uh, the uh, vision and the skill sets that you think you can make a contribution to be a board member, which is critical to the moving of the nonprofit. We ask you to think about that. Make a financial contribution. Uh, identify opportunities uh, for manufacturing products. You know, if you are a pastor of a church or you are a member of deacon board of a church or some member of the church, and you know that you can help us with getting to your pastor or the person that makes the decision. The choir director, yep. The choir director uh-huh. of some of these mega churches with three big choirs of over a thousand people. They're buying choir robes from somebody. Uh-huh. All right. Identify resources and equipment. You know, you may know of uh, equipment, sewing machines laying around in a school somewhere uh-huh. uh, that somebody might want to give away. And that has actually happened Thanks to Don Faust. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Don just had an extra touch, 25 extra sewing you know. <laughs> machines. Yeah. Or you can serve on a committee of the board. But my final thought is this. Uh, my appeal and question to your audience is this. If you have a loved one or family member or friend currently incarcerated or they have been released, my question is how hard has it been for them Sure. to make a good transition. They need a place to live. They need a job. And we can help them, but we're also asking you to help us to help someone to have a decent job with a decent income by donating to our nonprofit organization. You can call or text me at 301-717-1367. Email me at cfrancejara at gmail.com. Or you can go to our website at www.thechillstation.org, look at our website, and make a donation. Click on the donor button. Let me, get, let me, let me run back through here. The phone numbers are 301-717-1367. Email is cfrancejr at gmail.com. And yes. the website is thechillstation.org. Correct. There is another way you can donate. You can donate on your cell phone uh-huh. mm-hmm. by texting uh-huh. the word CHILL, C-H-I-L-L, to 443-743-3660. Oh. A screen will pop up, say, welcome to the Chill Station donor page. Thank you for your donation. You can donate whatever amount you so desire. So by donating, I have the opportunity to help me rebuild a community, help rebuild a family, help rebuild a life. Of an individual to change a life one stitch at a time. This is very cool. And because it's a nonprofit, it is, it is tax deductible. Absolutely. And we're getting toward the end of the year, folks. That's it. Exactly. Your donations now. 
We're uh, going to take another quick break, and uh, we'll be right back after this. You're listening to Secrets of Life, broadcast to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we'll kind of try to wrap up with Chester and uh, give you a few more ideas and points, and uh, we'll look forward to that. We'll be right back. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. And we're back. Thanks for being here. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts, and we've been talking with Chester France about reentrance and the uh, Lifting Labels initiative. And uh, we just, I think, has been a great time together. I'm. Uh, yeah, we're running out. We're running out of time, and there's a million yeah, so more things we, that I want to ask about. We may Vincent have to do Lombardo. another follow up right. with this uh, one. Yeah, Chester. Uh, Chester. The, the, the lifting labels it's just we love that name i mean it's it, because when somebody comes when somebody comes out of prison man they got a lot of labels stuff they went in with and now they're a convict on top of that they're a they're they're just they're just a blight on society they're think of all the things you can do to just beat somebody down but you're changing that you're changing every bit of that yeah that's really the what's behind the term lifting labels. And the design you you will see is one that when people see it uh-huh. and we say lifting labels, they know what that really means oh, yeah. with yeah. the incarcerated population. And the tagline of changing lives with each stitch. That's I love it. that too. Uh, that is amazing. And it uh, speaks to... Our purpose. So the nonprofit is called the Chill Station. Uh, they were talking to a, a pastor, um, uh, Chester France, and <laughs> among, <laughs> excuse me, yeah, yeah, among yeah, a lot of other labels, right? Yeah, yeah. Have some Harvard, labels Harvard yes. educated from <laughs> Sandtown, um, <laughs> but he, he is, you know. You, but you, you know what? Real quick, you have a capital campaign that's going on for right now. You're looking at you're looking at a focus of about seventeen thousand dollars, which is really going to like just turn the world upside down. So uh, Don, Don's going to give his contact information here, which will help people to get in touch with you. But again, C. France Jr., C. France Jr. at gmail.com. You're going to find out a whole lot more about the Chill Station and all about Lifting Labels, the initiative that's going to rebuild communities and rebuild lives. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just it's just great. And like I said, we may have to do a second one uh, with Chester and 
Uh, I just really encourage folks that if uh, if you're interested to uh, think about donating, think about uh, ways that you can help, because I think this is a great, great initiative. Well, it looks like that's about going to do it for today. I'm really sorry because I think we could go on and on for quite a while. Uh, But thank you for being with us. It's been a real pleasure. I do hope that you enjoyed the show. Now, if you prefer to contact me directly, you may do so by going to my webpage, donaldfouts.com. That's Donald, P-F-O-U-T-S, dot com. Or you may email me at don at drdon.me or don at drdon.me. And when you do, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Or you may call my office at 410-776-7656. Now, in our upcoming shows, uh, we're going to be talking about a couple other issues. The next week, we're going to be talking with uh, Gary Tollinger. Uh, who does a grief share program. And as we approach the holidays, we all know that the uh, grief is something that's extremely difficult for people to have to go through each holiday because they missed, they miss a loved one or something that's happened in life. And uh, they really struggle with that loss and fear that's involved with that. And uh, that, that'll be a great show. I'm looking forward to that as well. Also, we will be talking to uh, Jack Skeen, the Circle Blueprint is his book that he's done, and that's about how to kind of be successful in life and how to really identify your strong points or your weak spots and really know how to deal with that. And, uh, And then looking forward to that as well. So I'll look forward to being with you again next time as we continue to discover more about the secrets of life. This is the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So until next time, this is your host, Dr. Don Fouts with Vincent Lapadula. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us. This has been The Secrets of Life with Dr. Don Fouts. Tune in each week and learn how to change unwanted behaviors so that you can become the best person you can be. Here on Dr. Don Fouts, The Secrets of Life. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.